At The Home Depot, we're dedicated to helping you build the skills that get your home projects done right. That's why we offer free and interactive online DIY workshops. During the live streams, our knowledgeable associates help you tackle your DIY projects no matter your age or skill level. You can learn how to install new single pole switches as well as standard duplex and GFCI outlets. Register for free at homedepot.com slash workshops. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Hey, what's up? This is Sully from Godsmack. Strap on those boots, baby, because you are now in the trenches of the war room with the one and only Mistress Carrie right here on the Mistress Carrie podcast. Hey, it's Mistress Carrie reporting for duty from MCHQ for after action report number 10. Now, if you don't know what an after action report is, I host a show live on Facebook every Tuesday night at 830 called Cocktails in the War Room. And sometimes we have guests on the show. So if you didn't get a chance to watch last night's show, the video is always hosted on my Facebook page, uploaded onto my YouTube channel, and you can check it out at mistresscarry.com. However, if you'd rather just listen to my interview with Lejean, you can check it out here. And that's what we call an after action report. So this episode of Cocktails in the War Room was episode 126, and it aired on April 6th, 2021. Lejean and I talked about his time in lockdown, working on his upcoming solo album, and of course, the live stream shows that Seven Dust is doing the weekend of April 10th and 11th, performing their albums Seasons and Home in their entirety. We also talked about the band's USO tours and the importance of family and of positivity while dealing with COVID. We've been friends a really long time, and it was so awesome to catch up with him. So here's my interview with Lejean Witherspoon from Cocktails in the War Room. Lejean Witherspoon from Seven Dust. LJ! It's so good to see you. you. Can you see me now? Yes, of course we can see you. You look fantastic. No, I don't. You look great. Thank you very much for even having me on your beautiful show. And it's, uh, if anything, everyone knows that uh, at the beginning of our career, I feel like you were there. And if anyone knows, you've definitely grown up with us. So we're family before anyone. I dug this shirt out of the archives for you. What is this? This, Oh, it's, oh my God. Is that the uh, the, the, the game? The softball game shirt. (laughs) I dug it. So one of the things. I just noticed that. One of the things that started with the war room back when it first started was just me on my cell phone. And so every night before we went live in the war room, I would dig out some old concert shirt from my archives because I saved them all. And I have this big cedar chest. And I was like, LJ's coming on the show. I'm digging out the Dirty Birds jersey. What a great day. We had so much fun with the guys and God smack that day. And uh, I think I show my uh, not so well capability of playing uh, softball. So, well, listen, if memory serves, it wasn't exactly um, a serious softball game. I mean, we had a couch behind second base. We had professional dancers. I think we had done I think we did a show the night before and maybe not it slept and three shots in before the first. Yeah pitch was out on us. It was great though. We had professional <laughs> dancing girls in bikinis as the base yes. running coaches. Like we were not taking it seriously. So you know what? Let me tell you, every time uh over the I thought about it today and I was so excited about talking to you and I thought about it and I was like, you know what? That time in our lives, we were younger, which is great. We've grown, we've learned and we've gone through different things. But for whatever reason, that time it was a good movement. It felt like we weren't the biggest rock stars in the world, but we were stars in the world in our genre. Does that make Ab- sense? Absolutely. And you, made that, and you made that happen for us. You made it happen for all of us. And all the bands out there know who I'm talking about that came through and hung out with Mrs. Carey. And uh, not only that, the, the, just being able to be with you and making the album home and being in your energy and still being this young man and understanding like this is this new world and this friend of mine that I've met, I didn't understand that you were going to be friends for life. You know, I know what I mean? And we, and it's just, it's just really cool to see you after everything in the world 
and we have our hands dealt to us and you're still doing this and you're making changes and you're letting people hear music and that's what it's all about. Well, it's adapting to this new technology now, right? I mean, it's like when WAF goes off the air and so many rock stations are going off the air around the country, as you are very well aware, especially through the pandemic with the live stream concerts you have coming up, the rock community uh -huh. hasn't gone anywhere. How right. we gather together is changing. And through technology like this, through the podcast, through all of these other things, I'm still doing everything I was doing before, introducing people to right. new bands, you know, keeping in touch with the bands that we know people love already, having these great conversations, going to all of the shows. It's just a different way to do it now. I mean, yeah. the gold record you have behind you for the album Home, all those photos are from Loco Bazooka. Yes, absolutely. Uh, wow, incredible. You're on the stage. I mean, you're definitely back there on that side of that stage. I mean, you guys thing, smashed a cake in my face because my birthday was coming up. Look at your wall. I didn't have anything to do with the smashing of the cakes. You know I'm a gentleman, but yes, I, I know. still think there's We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If, if, if I if if I'm uh, remembering correctly, I believe it was Clint, who is not a gentleman, yeah. obviously, that smashed the cake uh, in my face. That's awesome. So I just think that what you're doing is amazing, and thank you for being like a very important force, always since day one. I think it's really cool, and I'm very happy to be here again. And yeah, it's weird for us to be able to do these, uh, like what you're doing right now, navigating in this obscure world that we're in. It's weird for Seven Dust to show up in this exclude what this disclosed environment and do a live show, which we'll be doing this weekend again. And I'll fly out tomorrow and we'll see each other again. But it's been very safe and it's been working because it's only the band. Uh, everyone has to be tested. It's a union run thing. So it's like everybody's super if, careful. If, if, if someone blinks and sneezes or somebody you might. I might like took you out and take you, but you know, not this, but you know what I mean? It's very yeah. safe and we've been very lucky. We all get to stay at Elvis's, our producer's house, uh, which is now a studio and it's, we're the only ones there. So we go straight to the house, straight to the place to record live and then back test and then home. So it's, it's been the way it has to be, but it's yeah. been working for us. Yeah. So it's, well, I and caught so up with Morgan. Bunch people, put, a, put a bunch of people in a place and get everybody sick. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I caught up with Morgan when his solo uh -huh. EP came out and you guys had already done a streaming show. And I yeah. asked him what that was like. And he said it was really weird because when the song is over, there's no crowd noise, right? That you guys are used <laughs> to this rabid wall of noise that comes at you from a Seven Dust crowd. And I said to him, you now understand what it's like to be a radio DJ. Because, oh, wow, yeah. because for me, for 22 plus years, I was in that studio on the air, animated, telling dick jokes, doing whatever. And I never got any feedback from the audience back because That's I couldn't yeah, hear well, I them. It. Well, so I'll tell you, so it's weird. So tomorrow we're rehearsing everything. And it's so weird because, you know, the crew guys, or the crew guys, they're our brothers. They've been with family. And, you know, we'll do something. And every once in a while you hear like a, yeah. <laughs> It's like one dude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. But you know what? Each time it gets easier and you try to really, you know, try to punch the people, you know, because that's what you're trying to do in a live setting anyway. And it's, you know, it is really hard to do it, but I, I, that's what we have to do. And I feel like I'm trying to, I'm like touching your grandma sitting next to the kid and the dad and everybody. And I want, everybody to rock out you know you don't have to mosh pit with grandma but you know just stand up and but you could if she wants to just be careful yeah. of her yeah, hip now exactly <laughs> but you know it's been fun for us and and thank the lord that we've had this uh this avenue to be able to do it with the, our team we have an incredible seven that's the team has been a, incredible to work with for us to have this opportunity to do it like I, said, I know a lot of people haven't been able to do it so it's been great for us um i wanted to talk to you about the albums that you picked this weekend because these live streams that you guys are doing it's two nights mm -hmm. one night it's the entire album seasons and the other night is the album home hey. and that album for all of us here in massachusetts we feel like that's our album because not only did you guys record it here but you guys were a part of 
the fabric for for the whole time you guys were in town yeah. you were popping up at every other band show and you were popping up at the radio station unannounced and um you know when i talked to morgan we talked about how i took you guys to the red sox game that day and oh. like all these memories of the making so when i hear that record it brings up all of these other memories of that mm -hmm. that moment in time when you guys were locked in Longview Farm Studios recording that record. What an incredible, like I said, it was a different time. It was a different feeling. It was a different era. Uh, Chino showed up. Uh, Skin from Skunk and Nancy. Oh. Dennis oh. Brennan. The Brennans were there. Uh, Sarah Jacques and her whole family. And, we, and you, we just had so many, but it wasn't a lot of people, but the people that were there were so important. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For the yeah. Toby Wright, the producer that did the album. Justin. And we lived there. Yeah, and Justin. Oh, wow. You remember Justin? And him. He and I keep in touch on Facebook. He was like, did those guys hear the cover of Waffle that I did? Yeah, Waffle, yeah, that's great. I was, I've been talking to his sister lately. It's so crazy, but we were so young and so blessed to have been in such a beautiful, magical, I feel, energy and environment to write music and, you know, to, to be a part of that. And thank you for being there. I remember every night being able to stay in my cool little cozy cottage right be beside the horse stables. And it was so, you know, I don't think anyone can understand it unless you had been there with us. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the things that have went down and just the character about the building, the farmhouse and just the wood, just everything was so crazy. It was so cool. What a great experience. Well, I've talked to a bunch of people. I talked to Des. I uh -huh. talked to... Um, uh, Spencer from Ice Nine Kills. I've talked to a oh, bunch of musicians that have recorded there. And the ghost stories. There. Huh? I didn't know Daz recorded there. Yeah, that Cold Chamber record they recorded there. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I think wow. Chamber Music, I think they recorded that there. Oh, wow. I didn't, well, maybe back then it was a little hazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, for me, it was like, okay, Seven Dust is at Longview for like however many months. Then Cold Chamber was at Longview. There were all these bands recording there. So I felt like I almost worked there because That's you great. guys used to send me out to like go shopping for you guys because it was yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. And I would make my interns go grocery shopping for you guys. Yes. And then I'd get off the air at midnight and drive all your groceries out there. And we'd yes. stay up all uh, night. Yes. What about the nature diva in the house where you would go eat at? That was a ghost. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you remember the whole story about that? It was nothing very scary, but it was still always like, <laughs> they made the best popcorn there too i remember oh my God. everything was the best there i mean even the old school tv with the, the big screen tv that had the yellow the green you know the old the, the picture it was like the old school like 19 i think it was from the 70s yeah <laughs> and like i remember you guys recording bender with chino yeah. Yes. And like him making all these crazy noises and Ian was there and like. Yeah. What a great time. So tell me this. We need to ask Chino this. So I remember us taking out one of the horses in the stable and he took a picture on one of the white horses. You remember that? Yeah. So I don't know if the pony, if the, the, the album White Pony came after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, much after that. Yeah. I, white I Pony came out in. Uh, yeah. So 2001? I'm not saying it had anything to do with it, but I was wondering if, I don't know if, who knows? Maybe who we should knows? look into that. I've never, seen him. On a horse. I've never seen him on a horse except for that time. That <laughs> long view. And like that was watching Skin from Skunk and Nancy sing that song because they were not a big band in the United States. Oh, at all. And you guys brought her in to sing on that song. And I just remember being in awe of this voice that came out of this petite woman. And I was like, where does that come from? Okay, let me tell you what's going on with that. So we play with them in the States. A lot of people don't know who they are. They've uh, been in this movie, the soundtrack. Uh, I can't remember the, the movie. Hol uh, Hol it was a great movie. I can't remember right now. Hollow Man. Yeah. Yep. So anyway. Blew it up. Incredible. I'm like, we love this band. We need to work with them. Okay. We do some shows with them in the States. It's crazy. They're like, hey, we love you guys. Let's take you over overseas with us. Because cool. you guys were a big rock band here 
but yeah, yeah. making that oh. jump to to go to Europe is a hard oh. thing. And over there, Skunk and Nancy was a huge band. It was it was like the Beatles versus Michael Jackson. There were people in waiting for a week at a week at a time at arenas that we would show up with Skunk and Nancy. It was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. We did a video over in Germany and they gave us all the love, but it was so crazy to see that band here in America not be as big. And then over there, they were just amazingly big. So it was yeah. cool for them to take yeah. us over and for us to do the same thing. And I hope that when we come back and we're able to be safe in this world again, that we're able to help bands and not just because you're heavier than this band and you don't sound like this band. I think music is music. And especially right now, we just need to come together and just play. I said, I don't care if it's a guy tap dancing and spitting in a cup before a seven to show. I'm buying his damn T-shirt. Let's go. <laughs> you, know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know, I'm just ready for it. It's 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 been very obvious for the rock community. Um, obviously, everything going on in the world outside of music as mm -hmm. the world is doing everything it can to tear everyone apart. This comes up in the war room all the time and it comes up in the podcast all the time. Did you mm -hmm. ever imagine that the rock community would have the ability to be an example for inclusivity and for love for the rest of the world? Because we are supposed to be the outcasts. Absolutely, no, 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 absolutely. No doubt about it. I feel like this is a welcome community. I wouldn't be in it for this long if I didn't feel that way. But there's always a few knuckleheads. Of course. That try to darken the shine on something that we've built. We built this city on, I don't care what you want to call it, rock and roll, yeah. metal, whatever. We can say all those genres, but we built this city. We're not going to let those knuckleheads out there take it down because they want to, you know what I'm talking about there. Yeah. I think, you know, I think everyone knows what we're talking about at the end of the day. Uh, we can all be knuckleheads, and at the end of the day, we all know right from wrong. Yeah. No matter yeah. what. And that's it. And um, I don't think I've ever been this guy that's to, have, to, to, have, to ever talk about anything like this, because it's always been about music. But now we have to not only look about about the music, we have to look about the world and the way pe it's affecting people. So I just hope we can get back to someday where it's uh, equality, understanding, a love, um, Music brings us together, and that's where I'm at. And I don't want somebody to come on your page and be like, "Oh, he's getting political." So I'm not no, getting political. No, no. What I'm saying is that this this community is, is that. I mean, yeah, you look at a is. band like The Who. You look yeah. at all of these female-fronted rock bands that have yes. found this amazing footing in the last decade. Right. You look at the amazing rock bands that are out there. Right. That it's are. Amazing. They're representing every kind of group, but they all are welcome in this rock community. And I think Absolutely. rock That's right now is an example to the rest of the world. That's what I I'm love saying. Love it. We've always we've always been that way. But yes. like I said, we've got a few knuckleheads out there that are making it weird. And you know who we're talking about. We don't have to go into it. No. But before I say that, we're gonna bring this to the. We're gonna bring this, and everyone's gonna just chill out for a minute. Wait. Oh, it's Mr. Rogers. Wait. Go a little bit to the other side. Towards oh there is that Mr. Rogers? That's Mr. Rogers, yes. right? Oh yes. my God! So this is at my bar, but let me tell you a story about this. So I got this as a gift, and I'm like so excited. I'm like I love Mr. Rogers, right? And I'm in the bedroom, and the wife is in the bathroom, and it's dimly lit because she's there, and I'm way over here in the bedroom, and she remembers seeing it. And I'm I'm pushing each thing that he says, and she's like, stop. I'm like, what? She's like, don't do that. The kids are going to hear it. I'm like, it's Mr. Rogers. What are you talking about? It's it's Mr. Rogers. It's cool. She's like, no, stop it. Stop it. And I push it again. It's like, everyone loves life and it's great. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I didn't realize she read the book and it was something in the book and he said something and it went to the point to where it said, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it sounded sexual. But it wasn't. It was like you had to read the rest of it. So she thought Mr. Rogers was a gag joke that it was. Oh, that somebody <laughs> recorded nasty messages in there. 
And I was listening to it. I'm like, I'm waiting for him to say something weird. He never did. I'm like those dirty Tickle Me Elmos that got bootlegged. Exactly. Remember those? Mr. Rogers. Everyone needs Mr. Rogers in their life. That's all I was saying at the end of the day. <laughs> well, that's one of my favorite sayings all the time is that is that phrase about look for the helpers. You know, yeah, in, a, in a time of tragedy, always look for the helpers. And I, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but um, yeah, how can you not love Mr. Rogers? I mean, come I, on. I think we're warriors, uh, Mrs. Carey, and I think we've been that for a long time. And yeah. uh, I'm glad to be on your show. I think it's very beautiful. Hold on, wait. Uh, I just saw some people walk downstairs. Uh, Where's Turn the light on. Turn the light on the bar. Come here. Turn the light on, please. He's I'm giving the order. On. The dad's Come giving the Come orders. Here, oh, my goodness. Say hello to Mrs. Carey. Ask me where this phone. Come up here. Get up here. Say hello to Mrs. Carey. Oh, my. Hi. You guys oh, are see you? so big. Oh, oh. I see you guys on social media this all the time, Jeff. but I can't believe how big they are, oh, LJ. Yeah. Guess what? Here's Mama is even in here in her pajamas. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> can you see me? I can. Here's What's going on, right Witherspoons? Right now, enjoying being kind of quiet. You know, I love you. Oh. Me and mommy are getting our shots tomorrow. Are you really? I guess, is that cool to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm What's waiting that? for my chance to get mine. Oh, we love y'all. We'll say goodbye to Mrs. Kerry. This is a longtime family friend. Hi. Uh, say she's saying bye bye. All right, bye. he's saying bye. Say bye. 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 Say bye. 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 Oh, oh my goodness. I said go to CBS.com. That's what we did. <laughs> That's awesome. No, they have every state. They have every state. Yeah. 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 It's just so it's we, getting an appointment. That's all. It's just you gotta yeah, get so it. We, you gotta get an appointment. Well, that's why I love you. Thank you. See? So uh you know, we take our shots tomorrow. We're gonna take our shots tomorrow. <laughs> How has it been for you? Because Seven Dust is such a road band. Uh -huh. How how much has it meant to you? And obviously the reason is terrible. How has it been being able to be home with the family so much? Thank you for asking that question because no one asked that question. Uh, for me, because we are that band that has been away. You're always on the road. You are, Seven Dust is a road dog band. It has been the most enduring special experience for me in my entire life uh i think mommy and uh they might even be ready for daddy to get back out on the road but i bet for me it's, it's been it's been incredible you know uh carrie it's uh you think about it uh even though we've changed it and shut it down but i'm able to focus even more on them and to figure out you know and to that time that we missed now we're getting to know each other you know what i mean and i, I would never take it for granted uh that's the better part of the lockdown, if that makes sense. Yeah. Just to, yeah. To, 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 to be with them and to be daddy, to be a husband to my wife, to realize that we could have not made it, but guess what? I even love you even more. There's a few things that weird me out, just like me, but it's great. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, I, I know I make her mad. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? But it's, I talked it's to Will Hunt uh -huh. um, when they were working on the Evanescence record, and I was like, he had like, come in from surfing. And I was like, I was like, hey, Will, how is it? He's like, yeah, they pretty much are ready for me to go back out on the road. Like, I've been home long enough. They're like, are you, when are you leaving again? <laughs> oh, that's just good. You know, we just actually, man, you know, it's, it's, we've been very blessed. We were able to just recently, we were able to go down to California and get away. We were there for a month. And it was good for Ash to be with her mom and the kids, even though we did the same type of living, you know, not going anywhere and stuff yeah. was closed yeah. down. We did things privately and the mask and stuff so it was still cool to be away from the winter and to be away from this for a year and to be there you and, just gotta uh, get outside and, and, and a new the, environment is good yeah we stopped at the rainbow they let us in before anyone the whole family and we went in took pictures they fed us took the well, of course we went to get the mozzarella sticks to go back to rancho cucamonga uh, we went and took a picture by Eddie Van Halen at a. I was going to ask you about that because I saw that on your Instagram. How cool is that billboard? The 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 oh, mural they built. Yeah, we made sure we just took the day. We were we stay in Rancho Cucamonga. Where we have a little spot with Ash's mom, and we just went down 
and we made sure that we did it early in the day and we went to rainbow at 11 o'clock no one was there the owner was there and was really tripped out that we were it was us he was like, oh this is really cool which i think is really cool for them to, to notice me and the kids were in the car waiting for us to get the mozzarella sticks and no one was outside on the patio and he said bring them on in and they all came in and we got the mozzarella sticks and we went inside again and we took the pictures on the stair and and for me being in the rock world and doing that it's so fun for me to even have the opportunity to bring my family into something that's so important uh, you know what i mean yeah to see yeah. a part of something that's still an like energy and an entity in this world that's going to go on forever hopefully you know what i mean how are they i mean before they were they were younger and really couldn't grasp it but they've got to be at the age now where they kind of understand what dad does for a living obviously the last mm -hmm. year you haven't been able to do it but I remember years ago Slash telling me that he would drive his kid to school and like his kid wanted him to drop him off down the block because they kid even even Slash wasn't cool to his own kid. It was like, Dad, come on, you're embarrassing. <laughs> like, how are the kids as they're getting older accepting what dad does for a living? Do they think, I think it's cool? Our kings are rock. He loves, kings and loves it. He's cool. Jayla thinks it's cool, but I think that I think I come in a little too hot for her at times because she's kind of laid back and I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah what's going on? What's up? You know, but I try to calm down, but I, I, she loves it still. She's, she's very proud of her dad. I'm more proud of her, you know, and what they do. And I think that dad, I feel, I even feel like dad is not cool as you know what I mean? Cause I'm, you know, is that, I don't, I'm like, do your dad's cool. And I'm like, am I? They're like, but you're kind of not now, dude. I feel like I'm coming out. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. I'm not. I watch. I watch stories with my wife. And <laughs> what about like with music? Are you are you schooling them on the good stuff? Are you schooling the kids on the good music? Are you are you teaching them what's up? Like, like how much do they got you listening to like TikTok songs and stuff? Like, are you teaching well, them about the good old stuff? Well, so listen, I don't even know anything about TikTok other than what they show me. So guess what? Everything up in here is old school. <laughs> what you talking about? They know about everything. It's a guess what? The radio records get played. It's yeah, I'm, I still call stuff Atari. If you look, uh, I have an arcade here at the house, but in my bar area, I still have an old Midway game, probably about 20 games from Timber to Defender to all the old. It's. We go downstairs and we have 80s night here at my house. How about yes. that? <laughs> what are you talking about? I love it. <laughs> I'm old school. I this can't get my hair to do that stuff anymore, but. But you, you're great. Uh, I'm so glad, you know, uh, I think that a lot of people can contest to this too. After this, this year has gone through, I, I feel like that uh, I've grown a lot. I can never really ever take anything for granted in life. But I also have realized that there are people in my life that I could definitely not ever talk to again and be fine. Right. right. Is that OK to say? Yeah, I think everybody's taking inventory of what what improves their life and what takes from their life without bringing anything else to it. And I think a lot of people are taking stock of like, the negative forces in their life because everything's so negative anyway that See, when you, you notice it, you people are negative all the time you're just like i just don't need that in my life anymore right do what you do do what you do and be you but like i just want to be positive you know yeah and i, I feel like i feel like my life's an open book and our lives are open books but i don't I don't wake up in the morning mad. I want to say hello and I want to say God bless you and have a good day. Even if I'm having a bad day, you know what I mean? I want to, guess what? Because it's going to get better at some point. Well, That's and I think we're all realizing too that mm -hmm. tomorrow's not promised either. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think as I'm 48 years old now, Carrie. And so I'm like, wow, I've seen a lot of people go and I still feel very blessed to be alive and to be healthy knock on wood you know what i mean like because you know we've seen a lot of our friends well you guys covered Soundgarden last year <laughs> i mean we lose chris cornell unexpectedly and then chester bennington and you start wow. looking around at these people that you thought were going to be 
in your life or in their music, like part of your yeah. life forever. And then they're gone and you're like, wait a minute, what? Thank you. Yeah. Talking about like, it's crazy. And so we're very, we're very lucky. We're very, whatever, whatever, who, I don't care who you pray to. I'm not like this. You know, I, we're very blessed to be able to continue to have a voice, to, to, to wake up, to smile, to do something good, to yeah. be positive. Yeah. It hadn't been positive at all. You know what I mean? So this is, this is something good. I'm, I'm looking forward to the new opening, to the new beginning, to life, to the new music industry, to us playing with bands that we hadn't played with before, to us enjoying this, this life again and getting back. I think it, when it comes back and the doors open again, it's going to be better than it's ever been before. I feel like it's going to be a, a revolution. I can't wait for the hugs. Yeah, like, so I can't wait to see you because it's the first thing anytime I see you, it doesn't matter how long it's been, that we just give each other this giant hug. And it's like, I miss Absolutely. being able to hug people and to see people that I haven't seen in a long time and be like, mm -hmm. I missed you so much. I love you. It's so good to like be with you. And mm -hmm. it's different when you are kind of locked down with your family, right? Because you got the kids climbing right. all over you and your wife is there. But there's a certain amount of isolation for some people, myself included, yes. that's come this year because my husband's deployed yes. and I'm Thank home. You. Congrats. Wow. What, he's a superhero. He so is. that's amazing. Congratulations. Yes. And uh, he wanted to marry me. Him. So obviously there's a screw loose or two, but yeah, oh. he's, he, he's smart. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there's a certain, there's a certain idea that like, you can go like weeks without physical contact with other people <laughs> that if you're locked down in a house by yourself, that you are just alone and I mean, I, I, for me, have been so grateful for my dog. I mean, I gave her a camera on my video show because uh -oh. she's my co-host. But like having my dog around has meant the world because sometimes yeah. I'm alone for a long time. So this is a question I have to ask you. So then do you ever, I'm sure you do because I do, when you talk to someone that you hadn't talked to in a while, you have to really ask them the question, how are you doing? Yeah. Like not just, oh, hey, good. No, no, yeah, no. Don't give me the automatic good. Like, seriously, how are you? Like, how yeah, are you handling things? Yeah, they, some days are not. Hey, guess what? It's I feel weird, you know, like, yeah, I don't know how I feel today, I, I, but I'm making it. You know what I mean? So that's that, that's cool that you're grounded. And I just always try to make sure that I ask someone that, like, really, what's you, you good? You know, are, are you really OK? <laughs> you know, like, I, I see that you're OK, but yeah. You know, well, that's one of the things know. that came from this show is that mm -hmm. this came out of the radio station being gone and out of my isolation and the family here in the war room, the people that are watching us right now that are commenting like crazy. And I apologize for not getting. Oh, yeah, they're like crazy. But they have been that support group for me because we get together every Tuesday night at 830 and we talk about the hard things. I can't tell you how many nights I've burst into tears on this show because life just got hard that day. Right. And it's been this amazing. That's why they call themselves the War Room family, because yeah. I would love I'm sorry, you finished. No, it's it's finish. all these people that are that have that same idea that they are looking for a place where they can go be surrounded by love do mm -hmm. positive things. We've done charity events. We, you know, we, we, I sold cocktails in the war room, t-shirts, mailed them all out of the house myself, donated the money to a veterans organization that was feeding veterans that are, that are struggling to, okay. um, you know, get out the, uh, like immunocompromised veterans, veterans that are having a hard time feeding their families. Like we're doing all this good and we're just finding a new way to do it. So what you said and it brought me back to an incredible time that I would never forget in my life. The only time that we were invited to do the Wounded Warriors was because of you. And we built that house. Homes for and, our troops. That was Sergeant yes, Keith Damon's for, house. That was the I'm first just saying, if you guys house. Watch, I'm, just kidding, man, I'm just saying, I don't play around. <laughs> Look at that thing. That thing will take somebody out. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It looks I'm like saying, something out of Indiana Jones. Oh, it is. For sure, rubies and all. <laughs> but you you're guys, so jealous, you're so awesome. You know, I'm a, I'm a man teaker. That's a, a word that I made up. So. <laughs> <laughs> there 
There's weird stuff in this bar. We could have a whole show just about that. We, Brad Arnold from Three Doors Down did that, and we showed yeah. each other memorabilia that we've been given from the military, and we did oh, a whole I, thing. And what else do you got in there? Do you want to show me some stuff? I mean, I got all kinds of stuff in it, but something that was taken down from the wall. I mean, it has nothing to do with the military. Oh, if I could show, I'll, I'll show you something military. But this is something I got to put back up. But this might be something cool for all the fans out there. This was presented to Ronnie Van Zant. <gasps> and this was to Melody. His daughter gave this to me years ago, uh, back at the bar, Three Birds, that we yeah. played years ago. Yeah. And she was like, you can take that. I'm like, what? And I'm like, oh, my God. So I got to. So after we got the new Seven Dust Blood and Stone that I put up, I had to take this down. So I got to find somewhere to put it. I might put it downstairs. But since we're here and you said military, I'll show you in my bar because I'm on this little lap, whatever you call these computers. And I'll see if we can go around to the back wall. And you see those coins? Oh, you got, wow, nice coin collection, LJ. That's Hold on, I can't hear you too good. We can see well, but I can't hear you very well. I see even including the purple heart that I have in that, and there's another case too that I have downstairs. But yeah, that hey, my troops out there, that those experience experiences have changed my life. Right. I mean, right. being in Missoula, playing in a tent in a blown up building, uh, being in Korea, uh, 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 everywhere. I mean. Abul, how do you say it? Ab how do you say it? Absambul. We were all over the place with Seven Dust and playing these shows. And those kids would come up to us. And uh, I even remember one time a kid saying, hey, man, uh, I saw you guys at the House of Blues in, uh, in Boston last year at the time that we were there. And he's got a gun and getting ready to go out and fight and saying, I can't believe you're here. And I'm looking at him like, I, I can't believe that you were at in the front stage in the front row of the Seven Dust show Just last year. Just all being a regular rock band. And you're getting ready to fight for our country in yeah. another world. God bless you. Thank you. Changed my life forever. So yeah. the War Room is a place that I would always be happy to be in. Yeah. You. I mean, they... You know, you are saying the same thing that so many, I mean, just this past week on the podcast, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick came on. Oh, hey, wow, wow. <laughs> and was and was talking about the USO tours that Cheap Trick did. You know, mm -hmm. Brad from Three Doors Down talked about the same thing. Yeah. Brent from Shinedown talking mm -hmm. about what those USO tours mean and what it's like to be on a stage and look out and see a crowd full of rock fans all in uniform, guns on their backs, there's no better rock show ever, ever. And you know, you know, and you know that they, it, it's a taste of home. It's the most incredible. And that's what I always heard. Like for the first time, you know, they might have a makeshift Burger King and Taco Bell and all of a sudden you got seven dust or shine down. It's like, Oh wow, this is weird. You know, this is really a, it, it, it's, it's, it's so incredible. And I, and I hope that, uh, you know, I hope that it doesn't have to happen. But if there's anything ever like that again that we have to do, I will be the first person in line to do it. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is when the bands get asked to do those tours, the USO helps to facilitate the logistics, but the bands do those shows out of their own pockets. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, yes. and they don't get paid to do those shows. They There's a lot of expenses to get your crew and your gear over there. And the yes, bands right. just do it, and and the band should be commended for doing it, and that uh, is why the fans are so grateful, because it, you guys just are like wherever we need to go, whatever we got to do, we're there. It was not a problem, not a headache, not a worry in the world, even to be in a place where you felt unsafe. You knew you were doing something incredible, and it was a, uh, for me, it was a, uh, a, I don't know. The whole time I was there, it just felt incredible just every day waking up i felt like i was doing something that was important yeah you know yeah. and it was it, it was cool it felt like we were helping so uh again i think the war room is really cool and i i think i commend you for doing this and uh, i think this is very special and i hope the best and i know it's going to be big because you've always done nothing but the biggest and the best Aww, and i love you, Jerry. you. i love you too and i wanted to have you on so we're going to put in a final plug for the live streams this weekend uh, if you go what? to mistresscarry.com, 
Huh? I'm flying out tomorrow morning. I know you got you're busy. So go to mistresscarry.com, go to the <laughs> events calendar. I've been putting all the band's live stream shows up on the events calendar because there's no real shows. And the right. links to buy the tickets are up there. So you can see Seven Dust do the full album seasons one night and the full album home. for home. Yeah. Well, we're good. I'm tired already. <laughs> right? So, yeah. Some Thank of those you songs so you haven't played in a while. It, we had, you know what? I've been rehearsing and we'll be rehearsing stuff tomorrow all day long. But uh, it's going to be fun because, you know, we, we did. So listen, we did the home album in its entirety. I think it was two years ago for New Year's Eve in Atlanta. But yeah. that was the only place that we've done it. So that is not going to be too hard because even it's been even though it's been two years. Still, you know what I mean? Music is music. You yeah. get back, it's like riding a bicycle. So I'm excited about it. And Season, Seasons was one of my favorite albums to work with Butch Walker. And it's going to be fun just to see the guys talk about what's been going on and even in that little small time you still kind of feel the energy of everybody out there because you know that you've been getting the feedback about the people watching it talking with you so we go in at least thinking that all right we you know hope they're going to be there they're going to be there so we're going to give you guys the best show that we can Jim has a question before I let you go LJ oh, wait, you forgot about the questions what's up yeah. Jim <laughs> Jim wants to know who's going to sing Skin's part of Licking Cream. Oh, good question. Can't is, tell you. Oh, is there surprises? Oh, it's going to be good. I'm so excited about this. This is good. Yes. Yes, uh, this is a good one. That's, hey, Jim, that's a good question. Man. It is a good question. Yes, you know, we could have said, no, we can't do that song. But this is a surprise. I'm, I'm really excited about it, you guys. There's a lot of love coming from veterans that thank you for doing those USO shows. There's a lot of people just talking about, um, you know, somebody te somebody messaged earlier that they they think of Seven Dust because they are tattoo artists listen to Seven Dust while they were getting tattooed. So that oh, wow. the music that, reminds them of getting their tattoo. That's a good memory, man. That's yeah. a good memory because I, I put things like that to music too. So hopefully you like that tattoo, my brother. <laughs> Steven wants to know if you're going to do Angel Sun, which still to this day is one of my favorite, favorite songs in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah Angel Sun is definitely, that was on home, right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I love that you don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, we have a million songs, man. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. Uh, Angel Sun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody just wants to make sure that they're sending you love. And before I let you go, because this is the last yes. question, because I know you got to go. Oh, what? You I, I, I'm hanging out with you in the war room. I'm all right. Right. You and your family have been through a lot. And I want it without getting into everything. I want to know, could you feel all the love everyone was sending your way? Can you, could, does, because the rock fans, we're all in this community. And, and sometimes we wonder if you guys, the bands are feeling the love that we are sending your way because in concert you can but when you mm -hmm. can't tour and you're stuck at home and things are hard did you know that we were all there loving absolutely. you absolutely okay. absolutely let me tell you what and i feel like with that situation and I, without having to go into it in yeah. detail everyone knows and i feel like things in life happen and we're not expecting them and then i feel like when it happens to you you're not expecting it's like oh my god i can't believe this happened to us and it's happened but then people that are friends and family can't believe it's happened to you. It's never happened to them. So they don't know what to say. But definitely, I felt the love. Does that make sense? Yes. I felt yes. the love and I felt the energy. And uh, thank you for everyone because it's still hard, you know. And I feel like God has a plan. And it's something that, uh, like I feel in life, there's all these obscure obstacles in front of us. And we have to kind of go around them or get across them. But we can't stop. We have to keep going. And I feel like that's the test that we've been put upon us. And uh, uh, it's, it's been hard, there are lessons it's, that we're all learning right now. Absolutely, Gary. And, uh, wow. Uh, it's been crazy. Yeah, but thank you for all the, the love. And uh, I think that was another reason why we went to California for so long is to get away and to kind of, because in February, that baby would have been here. Right. And, uh, you know, and so. Uh, but it's, it's. <laughs> Everybody is being tested right now in, in whatever their life is, they're getting tested. 
And we're all learning, A, who we can count on and who we can't, like we talked about. Yeah. But we're also learning um, that nothing lasts forever in a good way, too. That the pain also, with whatever pain you're feeling, like I know last year, losing my AAF family, it's not the same thing as the loss you suffered, yeah, but, yeah, but well, losing understand. something I loved that I poured my heart and soul into for all those years and losing that community, the mm -hmm. emotional cliff that you go off of when you're in grief and in and, and mm -hmm. the depression and the people that lift you out of that, that are there to support you, make all the difference in the world. Absolutely, and I thank, I thank our community out there and love and support, but think about this, how crazy has it been? And we're still here. And a lot of people, you know, and I feel so bad for the people that couldn't make it through it and f for all the ones that have made it and have kept strong and keep going because we can still make it through it. But a year and a half ago or however long ago, at a blink of an eye, everything changed. Like, we're the last people to, get, to actually get ready to go back out. So thank the Lord that we have the support from all the love from people like you that keep this flag flying. Because guess what? Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, damn, am I, am I that guy? And do I still sing in that band? Or, you know what I mean? Like, somebody's like, you know, I went to the grocery store today. Like, man, you still in the band? I'm like, I, I think I'm still in the band. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So well, my last name was right. from WAF for 20, how right. like 29 years. Mistress exactly. Carrie from WAF. You right. lose that part of you and you're like, who am I now? Right, right, right. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm still that guy. I love writing music. I love singing and everything. But you haven't seen me. So you don't know. But I'm still as passionate as I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm still that guy. Cool. Yeah. I, can I get that slot? Can I get some bologna? I don't know. <laughs> You're still the guy I remember that promised me someday I would eat Thanksgiving dinner off your abs and it never happened. And now you're a happily married man with a beautiful family and no Thanksgiving dinner for me, LJ. Hey, guess what? If you don't get me choked out by your husband, we can do it. We'll just have to shave my, my stomach down a little bit. And <laughs> we'll make it smaller than, you know, the whole Thanksgiving. It was just like, like a, just a sandwich. <laughs> I just remember you back in the day when we had that conversation the first time. Because we were do it. partying after OzFest. Oh. And you just kept, you were so worried about the temperature of the gravy. <laughs> I can't believe I got gravy tonight what? for dinner. I did. I got gravy for dinner tonight. That's so weird. You were I like, was, you were like, you can't have the gravy no, too hot. You're gonna burn me. The gravy can't be too I, hot. Yes, <laughs> I, I think it's weird because so, that's so weird. I got gravy because it was special at Price Chopper, and I was like, let me. She said, would you like the white or the dark? And I was like, the dark. So oh. I, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you, dude. It was so good. I, I, I can't see you in person, but being able to see your face, like it makes me so happy. Everybody is so grateful that you joined us in the war room tonight. Oh, thank you guys. I, I mean that. I, it's a, a pleasure. And Carrie, uh, a lot of people I say, I, I can say that uh, are friends. I feel like you're definitely more your family. You've been there since the beginning and you're still there and I love you. I love uh, you. You, you. You look prettier now than you did back then when we were kids. It's awesome. Aww, <laughs> That's thank a good you. thing, mama. Because I've seen some of our friends, they're, just, they're barely hanging in there. Not <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad miles under these tires, but. <laughs> I, I hear you, mama, but you're doing good. And hey, God bless you on this show. And please have me back again. I would love and. And if you ever feel comfortable enough to come and stay with me, I have a farmhouse you can stay at. I would love to podcast. come and visit you and to do, well, promise me that when you get ready to release your solo record. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That we're going to sit down and do a podcast episode. I would love to. Okay. And I can't wait for everyone to hear that with Sahaj from Raw that everyone knows. It's incredible. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming out. Thanks for even saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't, I can't wait to hear the solo stuff. And uh, I want to be able to like, dig in the dirt with like, I want to crawl around in your brain for a while, but I'm not oh, going to make you do it tonight. <laughs> Freak you out a little bit, but it's That's good. all right. That's all right. <laughs> all right. I'll let oh, you get back you. with the family, honey. I love you. And everybody can watch you this weekend. Two Seven Dust live streams. Get Yo. the links Ooh. on the events page at mistresscarry.com. All right. Bye -bye. Good night. Thanks I'll let so you off the yeah, hook. I'll talk night. to you soon. I I tell, tell, tell the man I said hello and be safe. I will. And tomorrow when you see the guys, will you please give them all big hugs for me?
I will. Well, first I'll like I'll we'll do a little social distancing yeah. and the I'll, elbow yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just rub okay, elbows with them for me. Right there you go. I'll see you, sister. <laughs> All right, bye, honey. We'll see you later. And there he is, LeJean Witherspoon from Seven Dust. A huge thank you to him for coming on Cocktails in the War Room. And like I said, if you want to watch the video, you can check it out at mistresscarry.com. If you want to get tickets to watch the live stream shows we talked about, that's up on my events calendar. And if you liked what you heard, don't forget to follow and subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast so you don't miss anything. You get the after action reports after my interviews on Cocktails in the War Room. Every weekday in under five minutes, I give you all your rock news, music headlines, and industry info. And of course, new full-length episodes every Wednesday. This week, episode 44 featuring Todd Whitener from Bliss Creek. I also want to put a plug in for Cameo. With the nice weather coming up, it makes the perfect gift for that person that you never know what to buy them. Just search for Mistress Carrie on the Cameo app and I can make you custom videos to commemorate any occasion for the people you love. The links to everything are on mistresscarry.com. And while you're there, check out my online store. There is some awesome swag in there and some new stuff is coming very soon. And I'll see you each and every Tuesday night live on my Facebook page for Cocktails in the War Room. At The Home Depot, we're dedicated to helping you build the skills that get your home projects done right. That's why we offer free and interactive online DIY workshops. During the live streams, our knowledgeable associates help you tackle your DIY projects no matter your age or skill level. You can learn how to install new single pole switches as well as standard duplex and GFCI outlets. Register for free at homedepot.com workshops. The Home Depot, how doers get more done.